This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. So in December, some more bad news for Rick Rude. Uh, he's going to be a part of a civil suit that was filed uh, based on Randy Jordan, who was 32 at the time, and Johnny Small, who was 39 at the time, claiming they were assaulted the prior summer here at Coyote Joe's nightclub on Wilkinson Boulevard in Charlotte. Supposedly, uh, Jordan uh, and, and, and Small were in a nightclub around midnight on August 13th, when, according to the lawsuit, Nobbs and Rude were harassing a bar patron. Small stepped in and asked them to leave the guys alone. And according to the lawsuit, Rude and Nobbs started beating the shit out of him. Mm. Quote, one of the nasty boys did me a belly to belly slam on the floor and then had a thumb in my eye, trying to pull my eyeball out. The girlfriend said the only reason she knew I was under there, she seen a little piece of my shirt under the big guy. The lawsuit also accused Coyote Joe's management of ignoring employee warnings that an assault was about to take place. And, uh, the general manager of the bar said, we were not notified that there was any sort of lawsuit truth be known. It was a minor infraction. Small and Jordan are asking for $10,000 in actual and punitive damages. This isn't something you hear a lot about, but I'm sure it's something that guys had to deal with a lot. If they wound up in a bar at midnight drinking and some civilians are involved. It feels like, uh, when they realize, wait a minute, these are TV stars. Maybe I can get some money out of this deal. Let's say, I think it's a little bit, I mean, I've been in, you know, fortunately I've never been, um, at the, at the center of situations like that, but I've seen it play out, you know, and I think you get any number of, uh, negative intersections you know when you put wrestling talent general public alcohol it's a perfect recipe depending on the talent in the bar and the clientele of the bar it's a perfect recipe for you know shit to go down i've seen it and for the, i want to really be sure i'm clear about this 98 percent of the time 99 percent of the time people that i'm around and in situations, even going back 20 years now, you know, hotel bar after Nitro being the best one, you, you know, wrestling fans know you're going to be there. You know, you can't avoid it. You know, the bar's filled with wrestling fans, you know, especially as we started getting hot, it was more like a hot Friday night in the club than a Monday night in the club. We were blowing away Monday night football in these particular, in a lot of the, you know, the hotel bars were sports bars. So, you couldn't avoid it. And there was alcohol. So you got wrestlers, you got civilians and wrestling fans and you got alcohol. 99% of the time, you never had an issue. Fans were very respectful. Sure. They wanted a little bit of your time. They wanted a picture if they could get one, but I've rarely ever seen um, situations where, you know, I was concerned about a fight breaking out, but there have been some. And more often than not, it's not the civilian just happened to be in the wrong place in the wrong time. And as that complaint pointed out, you know, this individual, the guy is asking, you, just well, kind of walked over to the bar and asked, you know, Rick and, and, um, and now I'm seeing politely, Hey, leave these guys alone. Okay. That sounds good on paper. I've seen more situations where civilians are trying to make their bones or good credibility, if you will, in the local bar by trying to start shit with a talent. I've seen it. I saw a guy do it to big show. Come on, people are stupid when you, certain people get real stupid when they start drinking and it's like, they want to fuck her. They think it's fun. You know, they've lost their sense of judgment, right? And they think it's just a big joke or it'll be funny or their friends will think that they're, you know, whatever for, for fucking with a wrestling talent. And depending on who that wrestling talent is, you can get your head fucking caved in. I've seen that rarely seen wrestling fans, you know, being obnoxious to wrestling talent you know, and disrespectful, but I've seen those situations where people, you know, they, they stepped out of their lane. They weren't appropriate. They were egging it on. I, like I said, I watched a guy egging on Paul White in a bar till he disappeared. <laughs> he said, Boom. Come on, where'd he go? Oh, he's down there. Silly. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to anybody? Especially somebody that's, you know, 
professional wrestler because the odds are they're a professional wrestler for a reason, not the least of which is at the very least they're tough as hell. Well, ultimately, um, he is going to drop it. Before we talk there, we should we should mention that uh, the, the whole issue with the lawsuit we talked about, fighting in a bar, rude and knobs figure out what this is about. So they countersued these two fellows for in excess of $10,000. The idea being, okay, you're suing me for 10 grand. I'm going to sue you for more than 10 grand. And before you know it, he finds himself in Japan and he's going to drop the belt to Hase in 16 minutes and 52 seconds. Of course, they're going to have a rematch at the time it's speculated in the newsletters, specifically the observer that they'll never acknowledge that this happened, uh, because it's probably going to switch back. So it won't be acknowledged in the U S but it's the first major singles, uh, heavyweight title won by Hase, who's probably the best worker in the company. Um, it does create a rematch. As we mentioned earlier, it was going to happen eight days later. It's a sellout 8,500 fans. And what do you know? Rick rude regains it a little old school action there. Uh, it also makes the newsletter in uh, early April. Rick Rude's manager on his last tour was named Lady Love, and she didn't look familiar at all, but she played a part in several of Rude's matches. In the match where he regained the title, Hase was on the top rope, and she sighed on the apron by him and hiked up her skirt, distracting him, allowing Rude to DDT Hase off the top, do a full Nelson front drop, similar to a Russian leg sweep, and then win by submission. She also distracted the ref in Rude's single match against Chono, allowing Rude to use a low blow, which led to a pin. Lady Love. How about that? Who is she? Who is she? I'm going to throw that in our Google machine right now. Oh, I thought, I mean, I thought maybe there was a surprise at the end of that Lady Love segment because I was, who is Lady Love? Right? I don't know. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.